the consumers ask you a lot. Oh. The other day, they wanted to review some consumer oh, yes. uh, This is a classification data. The uh, UHO classification of bone tumors. Uh, you have some uh, tumors that produce cartilage, like the osteochondroma, chondromas, chondroblastoma. Then you have tumors that produce a, a osteoid matrix, like the osteosarcoma, osteoid osteoma, osteoblastoma. Then you have some tumors that produce fibrous tissue. You have the human sarcoma, the giant cell tumor, a vascular tumor. Uh, and then you have these uh, tumors that are pretty common, like the, uh, in fact, we don't know if these are tumors or not, right? Like the aneurysmal bone cyst, uh, simple bone cyst, uh, uh, fibrous dysplasia, and uh, EG or lung cell histiocytosis. So this is a very long list, right? So we will try to make this uh, easier. One very important concept is the plain film is the most useful examination for the differential diagnosis of a bone tumor. Then CT and MRI could be helpful in some occasions, right? So I call you Aya on the phone and I tell you I have a bone tumor. You can ask me three questions on the phone. Age of the patient. Now, age. No. No. Where? Where? Where in the bone and what bone? Right. So, two questions. You have one more question to go. Very important question for the differential diagnosis. Something more general. The lesion is aggressive or not? Okay, so these are the three most important questions that you have to ask yourself when you are reading a bone tumor. So regarding the locations, there are a few tumors in the epiphysis, right? Those are the giant cell tumor and chondroblastoma. Then you have you may have infections or GO. GO and subchondral cyst are the same thing. Alright? So the most common lytic lesion in the epiphysis is probably a uh, GO or subchondral cyst. That may be huge. Then you have the tumors that are in the diaphysis, and these are small cell tumors, like uh, lymphoma, myeloma, and uh, metastasis. Those are common in the diaphysis. And the rest of the tumors are in the metaphysis. Okay? Uh, you win, it was considered in the past that it was a tumor from the diaphysis. Now it's considered that it's from the uh, uh, diametaphysis. Okay? And as you can see here, most of the tumors are eccentrically located. The exception is the unicameral bone cyst, and the chondroma could be, it's usually central or a little bit eccentric. Okay? So, location, that's very important. Then is the age of the patient. So you have different dif differential diagnosis the, according to the age. So uh, if you are in the first decade of life, the simple bone cyst is very common, EG or uh, EG is very common also. Uh, if it is the, the lesion is uh, aggressive, could be a human sarcoma, could be leukemia, or could be metastasis of neuroblastoma. If you're in the second decade and the lesion looks benign, could be NOF, fibrous dysplasia, simple bone cyst, ABC, osteochondroma, osteodesteoma. Most of the tumors, as you can see here, are in the second decade, right? And if the lesion uh, looks aggressive, could be an osteosarc or you in sarcoma. This is not common at all. Then, uh, if the patient is older, you may have enchondroma, giant cell tumor, and if the lesion looks malignant, could be a chondrosarc. So the big concept here is young or old. If it is old and the lesion looks uh, aggressive, could be metastasis, lymphoma, 
or chondrosac, okay? And if it is young, could be all these things, all right? So the primary tumor, the most common primary tumor is multiple myeloma, right? But the, the, the other primary tumor that you can see in all people are chondrosac, okay? So you have a little inclusion, also always consider chondrosac in an old patient. Okay, so then the, we have the radiographic uh, appearance of the lesion. So you have to you have to decide if the lesion is aggressive, non-aggressive, or in the chart. On how can you do that, uh, Daniel? Uh, sporadic margin, uh, bony invasion. Uh, bony invasion. Oh, no, bony invasion. Uh, so margin. Margin. If you have sclerotic margins, you know that the lesion is, is benign, right? If you can draw a nice pencil. Very good. So how do, you, how do we call this? Zone of transition. Zone of transition. Very good. And the, the narrowest zone of transition is when you have a, a sclerotic margin, right? So when you have a sclerotic margin, the possibility of being malignant is zero. All right, so zone of transition, what else? Uh, periosteal reactions. Periosteal reaction, very good. And what else? Cortical destruction. Okay, so if you see cortical destruction, you know that the lesion is aggressive. In this case, you can see a lytic lesion here, and you have destruction of the cortex. So there is no way that this is uh, a benign lesion. Uh, this is an aggressive lesion. Sometimes the infection could look uh, aggressive too, right? Very good. So this is an aggressive patient. But be careful because in this case we have cortical discontinuity here in this lesion. This is this lesion here, and you can uh, you see cortical discontinuity. But this is not destruction. The cortex here was replaced by fibrous tissue. So what is this, Abi? Elongated, eccentric, lobulated sclerotic margin. What is this? Anyone? Anova. Yes. Fibrous uh, cortical defect or fibrous antoma or anova. Okay. So here the cortex is replaced by fibrous tissue. It's not. Uh, mm, there is no destruction. Zone of transition. So here you can. See you can come with a pen and mark the limits of the of the lesion here. This is a benign lesion. But can you do the same here? No, no, very ill-defined zone of transition. So this is aggressive, this is non-aggressive. There are two exceptions uh, regarding the narrow zone of transition. What aggressive or uh, malignant lesions may have a narrow zone of transition? Two. No. Lymphoma is usual. Multiple myeloma. Very good. May have punch out lesions and metastasis too. Okay, so you may have lytic lesions with narrow zone of transition and uh, could be malignant too. Be careful because this of narrow zone of transition is for x rays. It's not for CT, not for MRI. It's just for x rays. Okay? Very good. And this is the. When you see this with the sclerotic margins, you know that uh, that this is a benign lesion. There is no way this is a malignant lesion. This is a typical lesion that we see all the time here in the interdocanteric area, and it's liposclerosis by a fibrous tumor. It's a benign lesion with fibrous tissue and, and fat. Periosteal reaction. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> okay, so I want you to mention the, all the periosteal reactions, type of periosteal reaction that you know, from the less aggressive to the more aggressive. So less aggressive would be just like thickening of the periosteum or lamina? No, it's, it's thickening. thickening. So solid periosteal reaction, this is benign. Okay, so there is a, a, an aggressive process or something that is irritating the periosteum, 
but the periosteum has time to react and, and uh, lay calcium. Okay, so you see thickening of the periosteum. Solid periosteal reaction. Then? Lamina, very good. Or lami laminated so onion skin. Yeah, Yes. Okay, so I would say sunburst and uh, hair on ends, and then golden triangle. Okay, so let's see examples of those. Uh, so periosteal reaction is uh, related with the timing of the irritation, right? So if you have a benign, it's going to be thick and dense, and then you will have the other one. So. Uh, this is very important. Uh, sometimes benign lesions may have aggressive periosteal reaction. For example, infection. But the opposite never happens. Okay? So malignant lesions never will have benign periosteal reaction. You were saying like the timing, you just mean like if it's thick and then it's had time to lay down bone. Correct, correct. That's it. So it's a it's a process that is not aggressive because very good. So this is solid periosteal reaction, right? This is benign, uh, usually it's a benign process. And this is a good example of uh, uh, solid periosteal reaction. You see here this thickening of the cortex. And how do you call this? The nidus. Very good. You said it's a question? Oh, yes. He did. OK. So. Um, when the nidus has a uh, calcification, you include this lesion in the differential diagnosis for sequestrum. What is sequestrum? With infection, but what is sequestrum? Anyone? Where it's part of bone that's not contiguous with the rest, and so if that remains in there, you'll never be able to cure it off. Excellent. So this uh, isolated, isolated necrotic bone in the, in the middle of an uh, osteomyelitis, okay? So you can, this is very important. If you see sequestrum on, on x-ray, you have to report it because antibiotics will not reach there. So the surgeon has to go and remove the sequestrated fragment. So when you see osteomyelitis and when you see sequestrum, uh, you have to include in your differential diagnosis osteoderosteoma or some uh, fibrous tumor. So, but you said this was a nidus? This is just it doesn't a nidus. have yeah. the calcified no, the nidus may have the calcification, and they simulate the question. You understand what I'm saying? This is a case of osteoderosteoma. This is a case of osteoderosteoma, yeah. This is a case of osteoderosteoma, and you have a loosened nidus. The nidus may have a central calcification, and you may think that this is sequestrum, OK? But sequestrum is for infection, not for this, OK? <coughs> um, very good. So this osteoderosteoma, uh, you know the history of this, no? pain at night, the painkillers are good for this. Uh, the, I resected some nidus and it's painful, painful for me, not for the patient. Because going through the, all these cortex with the needle is possible. Right? So now I think you, you did some radiofrequency, right, Dr. D, on this, on this nidus? But they, if, if they ask you the board, the first line of treatment is just painkiller because may, many of these lesions disappear by themselves. Okay? Good. Very good. So uh, what happened if you have the denarius could be in the in the area of cortical thickening or could be in the medullar cavity, okay? So uh, you have to be careful with that. And if you have the denarius or the osteoderosteoma in an epiphysis, you will not have periosteal reaction because there is no periosteal in the epiphysis. Okay, so you will have synovitis and pain, and the patient may have symptoms similar to infection. This uh, is the age of osteoderosteoma. Usually, it's for young people, femur and tibia more common in the spine. This is the posterior arch. This is very important. May produce scoliosis in the spine because of the pain. Uh, you will have the nidus and the sclerosis. Differential diagnosis could be uh, infection, uh, could be a stress fracture because you see the cortical thickening. 
uh, osteosarc, I would put this in the differential diagnosis, metastasis and osteoblastoma. Osteoblastoma is the same lesion, but when the nidus is more than, than two centimeters. Dr. Sarkisi, yeah. go ahead. On that, which way would the scoliosis go? On the uh, for the... That's a... It's a way from the... Uh, yes, the, the convexity is away from the... It should be away from the right. Yeah. Away from the lesion. Yeah, away from the lesion. If, if they asked you that? Uh, there may have been a question. A question, uh, a question. I, I don't remember which one. Okay, so this is laminated periosteal reaction. You can see there different layers of bone. Uh, this is a patient with osteosarc, sclerotic loose lesions, and periosteal reaction. As you can see, look at the different uh, layers of bone, right? This is, a, this is the most aggressive or one of the most. This is interrupted periosteal reaction. Okay. Yeah. On the, if you had an abscess instead of osteoid osteoma and you had, uh -huh. say, the sequestrum, you would still have the sclerotic lesion if it was abscess, like the sclerosis? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you may have, yes. Okay. If, in chronic osteomyelitis, you, have, uh, may, you may see sclerotic change. Okay. All right, so this is a sunburst or a hair on it. So there are some fibers that are called a sharpest fibers that connect the periosteum with the bone. So when these are stretched and calcified, you see this, this uh, aggressive periosteal reaction, okay? Here's on that. This is very aggressive too, and you can see here other patients with osteosarc, sclerotic lesion, and the periosteal reaction uh, here on ends of some burst appearance. And remember, as a, one of my teachers uh, used to say, osteosarc uh, starts in the lungs and then goes to the bones, okay? That means that is, the metastases are so frequent in the lungs that whenever you see the osteosarc, it's probably met in the lungs. All right, so this is Coleman uh, triangle, or Coleman, Coleman angle would be a better term. The, the, this elevation of the periosteum, but the only area with calcification is the more superficial part here. So this is very, very aggressive periosteal reaction. Another patient with osteosarc, you can see the elevation there elevation there that is called mass triangle. Okay? So we are talking about osteosarc. Osteosarc is a, a tumor of young people. 80% uh, or 85% is in patients with less than 30 years old. Uh, it's more common in the metastasis of the femur, tibia, and proximal humerus. So these are long bones that they have a long period, period of uh, growing. Osteosarcs are more common in big dogs than in the small dogs. So there is probably a connection between the growing process and the and osteosarc. Uh, you will see uh, there are different uh, types of osteosarc. The in the conventional type you will see uh, sclerosis and lytic area. And you will see uh, this matrix, that is osteoid matrix that looks like clouds. Okay? and also periosteal reaction. So look at this, this is typical uh, osteoid matrix, aggressive osteoid matrix of osteosarc. It's like a cloud. And the tumor is there, and there is also periosteal reaction, okay? So this is malignant osteoid matrix. And you can com compare with benign osteoid matrix. This is a patient with osteoblastoma, very unusual tumor. I have never seen one uh, in my life, in my uh, personal case. Uh, I think this is, I think Dr. Luragis gave me this, and you can see here the difference between mature osteoid matrix. Look at the, it's more organized, like the bone, right? You have cortex, you have trabecular bone. Here, it's not organized. It's like a cloud, very heterogeneous, very aggressive. Okay, so osteoid matrix, you can differentiate between malignant and benign. Chondroid matrix, no. Chondrosarc, and uh, chondroblastomas and chondromas, they have the same type of chondroid matrix. So this is chondroid matrix, arcs and rings. We already talked about this several times. Uh, this is a, an enchondroma. Enchondroma is very important. I always see uh, reports that say enchondroma versus infarct. Uh, infarcts have sclerotic margins. And chondromas don't have sclerotic margin, have a, are loosened with chondroid matrix. Okay? But this could be a chondrosarch too. 
because the control matrix is very similar. The uh, clinical symptoms pain may favor the diagnosis of chondrosal, cortical destruction, periosteal reactions, soft tissue mass, all these favors uh, chondrosal. Very good. So one important tumor that we have to talk about is the Ewing sarcoma. Uh, these are lytic tumors, very aggressive and in young people, okay? So if you see an aggressive tumor like this, that is lytic with periosteal reactions, soft tissue mass, uh, think, uh, consider Ewing sarcoma, okay? First two decades, more important. If you see this in a newborn, what is your first differential diagnosis? Neuroblastoma. Metastasis of neuroblastoma. Very good. Metastasis of neuroblastoma. So this Ewing sarcoma and lymphoma, they have, uh, well, um, this Ewing sarcoma are tumors with small cells that can go through the Habersian system. They can go to the soft tissue, produce a soft tissue mass with no cortical destruction. So when you see a, a mass infiltrated in the bone marrow with a soft tissue mass and the cortex looks normal, that means that it's a tumor with small cells, like lymphoma or Ewing sarcoma. Okay? You understand what I said? Bone marrow infiltration plus mass, no cortical destruction. So lymphoma and Ewing. Okay? And one particular thing that I will, I will ask you when we go over the board reviews, is that Ewing may simulate infection uh, from the clinical point of view with uh, increased sedimentation rate, uh, fever, and pain similar to osteomyelitis. <coughs> Very good. So this, you know, this guy, Helms, is the, the, guy, so the guy of Brandon Helms, came up with this mnemonic that is very useful. When you start uh, reading bone lesions, you can go over every single of these uh, letters and you will come up with a good differential diagnosis. So F is fib fibrous dysplasia. Fibrous dysplasia is a long lesion in a long bone. Typical will, typically will have a um, grand glass appearance, but sometimes you don't see that, okay? But whenever you see a long lesion, look at this lesion, look at this very expansive lesion in a long bone, think, uh, consider fibrous dysplasia. And chondroma is a chondroid tumor, very common, very common. Uh, it's a tumor that you can see in young people, any tubular bone uh, of the hand, usually the, the metacarpal or proximal uh, phalanx, uh, and you will see a loosened lesion uh, with no sclerotic margins and arcs and rings, okay? If you have a lytic lesion that is not in the hand and you don't see a control matrix, you shouldn't put in the differential diagnosis and control, okay? But so if you, should you, you should not. Okay. But if you see a lytic lesion in the hand, it's not necessary to see the control matrix. You can call it and chondroma, and probably it's going to be a chondroma. There, is, there are no malignant bone tumors in the hands. They are very, very uncommon. All right? Giant cell tumor. So I will go back here, and I will ask Aya, give me five radiographic findings of giant cell tumor. Uh, the, the very good. Correct. Uh, it's uh, a in the epiphysis, but in the articular surface. Correct. Completely like the atherosclerosis and almost the marginal areas. Correct. <coughs> uh, Expansile, eccentric, uh, with narrow zone of transition, but no sclerotic marsh. Very good. So let's see this lesion. Loose and lesion, in this case, it's not clear, it's not contacted clearly the, the articular surface, but this is the epiphysis. It's kind of expansion, loose and narrow zone of transition. I think we you said everything, right? <coughs> Close epiphysis. <coughs> the, I, the knee area is the most common place for this. And these tumors uh, may have some uh, uh, 
hemosiderin of MRI. So that's why they are low signal intensity on T2, okay? So it's like the giant cell tumor of the tendon shape are low signal intensity on T2 because they have hemosiderin. Very good. Is the centralized lesion not eccentric? It's eccentric, eccentric, yeah. Eccentric. Yeah. So one. Usually it's eccentric. Okay, but this one is? This one, well, this is in the center of the, but it's, it, the lesion was big. Okay. I don't know if, it's, if this okay. is the same. Okay. Yeah, yes. Okay. All right. So this is a tumor that you will see frequently, OK? It's a enchondromas. I will tell you what tumors are you going to see in your life and what tumor you have to know for your board. And this one is one that you have to know, OK? Giant cell tumor, you will see that. non fibroma, fibroma, you have to know this, OK? So uh, some consider this the most common tumor. Some people don't consider this a tumor. Uh, and some people consider the chondroma the most common tumor, or the octochondroma. Sorry. So this is the these are the characteristics of a fibrosantoma, non-ossifying fibroma, or four fibrous cortical defect. Three names for the same entity. So you have a lobulated margin. The lesion is elongated parallel to the long axis of the bone. is eccentric, and the margin are sclerotic. Okay. So this is non-ossifying fibroma, fibrosantoma, or the third Arts, name is? Yes, but when it is less than two centimeters, two and a half centimeters, some people consider three centimeters. Same entity. I would recommend you to report this as a fibrosantoma. Um, so osteoblastoma, I will not talk about, we, I show you a case, it's not common at all. Metastasis is very common, myeloma is very common. Uh, don't call metastasis when you see a lesion of, of multiple myeloma because then the, the uh, oncologist called me and told me, hey, the patient has multiple myeloma and adenocarcinoma or whatever. Okay? Uh, multiple myeloma is a primary tumor of the bone. Okay? It's a primary tumor <coughs> of the bone. Uh, could be um, in one place or could be extended in all, in, in all the bones, but it's considered a primary uh, tumor of the bone. And you will see multiple lytic lesions, as you can see here in the skull, that is a very common place for multiple myeloma. And in the ribs, you may see these expansile uh, lesions, okay? Could be expansive. When you have a, in one single lo location, you call it plasmocytoma. And when you have it in multiple places, you have multiple myeloma. An aurismal bone cyst, this is a tumor that you will see for sure in your life. 80% uh, of the cases is uh, below, uh, under 20 years old. Usually it's in the metaphysis, and <clears throat> you can see it in the posterior arch of the vertebral voice. Uh, and this is probably vascular malformation more than a true tumor, okay? And uh, I will give you a, a very important clue when you see it in the spine. It, could, it can go from one spinous process to another, okay? And you see this bubbly, uh, lytic uh, lesion, expansive, with very thin cortex, okay? This is, uh, you can put this in your differential diagnosis when the physis is open, okay? When it's a young patient. And the typical uh, MRI findings are the ones that you can see here, the fluid, fluid layer. Okay? I got a question about the last, like whenever you're showing the multiple myeloma within the rib, uh -huh. you can get like fibrous dysplasia of the rib. That, how do you feel like those? Uh, you just look for the other bone findings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be seen, like a fibrous dysplasia. Could be expansal. Uh, fibrous dysplasia is the most common uh, lesion uh, of the rib. So without secondary findings or anything like that, you can yeah, go down? Yeah, because both are lytic. Uh, very good. So um, can you give me, Aya or Daniel, can you give me a differential diagnosis for fluid fluid level on MRI for a tumor? Correct. OK, very good. But how can you make the differentiation? Mm 
more aggressive pattern, okay? So telangiectatic osteosarca, a very uncommon osteosarcoma, could, be, could have this bubbly appearance, this lytic appearance, but you will have a cortical destruction, periosteal reaction, more aggressive lesion than this. This is a very benign uh, looking uh, lesion. Simple bone cyst, are you going to see this? For sure, you're going to be, you see this, so you have to know. It's a lytic lesion, usually centrally located. And how do you call this, Hunter? How do you call this? Is it a pathologic fracture? Good, it's a pathologic <laughs> fracture, but? Uh, <laughs> fallen fragment. Fallen fragment, very good. <laughs> fallen <laughs> fragment, you have to fallen yeah. fragment. So when you see a fallen fragment, you know that this lesion is not solid, it's uh, lytic, and uh, your differential uh, should be solitary bone cyst or unicameral bone cyst or simple cyst. Um, these are benign lesions. Uh, other consideration is infection. Always consider infection in your differential diagnosis. When, I, when we go over the board reviews, consider infection in your differential diagnosis for pediatric patients, okay? And let's see. Brad, can you describe this lesion? <coughs> Can you be more precise? Uh, well, this is a pediatric patient, so you have a head that you are not seeing. Okay. So this is the metaphysis, right? So you have a lucent lesion in the metaphysis. The metaphysis is the most common place for infection, okay? Because you have a, a lot of vessels with slow flow, serpiginous pattern of the vessel, so this is the, the, the ideal place for bacterial seed there in the metabolism. So always consider infection, okay? Always consider infection when you are uh, evaluating a possible uh, bone tumor. Then we have these tumors, the chondroblastoma, enchondroma, and osteochondroma, and I will ask uh, Daniel to teach us about the difference between osteochondroma, enchondroma, and chondroblastoma. Very similar names for chondro tumors with different radiographic appearance. Chondroblastoma is located in the epiphysis. Excellent, 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 excellent. We used to call it epiphyseal chondroblastoma when I was in residency. Epiphyseal chondroblastoma. Okay. It has a lucent slash lytic component. Uh, okay. It can be confused with it uh, geo frequently. Uh, Very good. Enough with chondroblastoma and chondroma? The chondroma, you know, the arts and rings without the sclerotic margin. Without the sclerotic margin. Without the sclerotic, without the sclerotic margin, very good, usually in the metastasis. And the osteochondroma? Sorry. Osteochondroma is the exostosis. Some, somebody said that. Okay. Very good. So this is a uh, chondroblastoma here. Very important. It's in the epiphysis or apophysis. Could be in the patella, in the greater trochanter. Could be, uh, could be in the in the talus too. All all these uh, uh, all these places are common for uh, chondroblastoma. Okay. Uh, you will see a lytic lesion with chondrometrics, as you said. Sometimes you need CT to see, to evaluate the chondrometrics, you see? The, the chondrometrics there, I, I think we didn't call it a, a chondroblastoma here, or maybe we did because it's a lytic lesion in the epiphysis, so the differential diagnosis is either infection or chondroblastoma, no? or EG2. And here you can see the chondrometrics. With it in on this MRI, you can see that the lesion has similar signal intensity to the cartilage. That's a hyaline cartilage, and you see the lesion with similar signal intensity to cartilage, and uh, it was a epiphyseal chondroblastoma. And this is an osteochondroma. Osteochondroma is an exostosis, and the characteristics are the, the tumor, 
is exophytic, the cortex is in continuity with the cortex, the cortex of the bone is in continuity with the cortex of the tumor, and the trabecular bone of the <coughs> bone of the yeah, the bone is in continuity with the leaf. Okay? And usually it's growing away from the physis and there is a cartilaginous cap that you cannot see on plain film but you can see on uh, MRI. So Aya gave me five complications of uh, osteochondroma. Fracture. Fracture. Uh, Very good. Nerves and, and, and vessels with maybe some uh, yeah. pseudo aneurysm due to compression of the arteries. Pain. Pain because they may form a bursa. Okay. So Laura, what is a bursa? Bursa. What is a bursa? Anyone? It's a. It's a fluid-filled sac. It's like a buffer kind of. It's a it's a sac with synovial cells and fluid, right? When you are a newborn, you don't have any bursa. But when you start moving, you start creating bursa, right? So when you have this tumor, you create a bursa, you may create a bursa around this tumor, and this could be painful. So the, if you do an MRI and you see the bursa, the surgeon has to go there and remove the bursa. So bursa formation and pain, comp nerve compression and pain, fracture and pain, other malignant transformation. That is very uncommon if you have a, a single tumor, right? It's common uh, if you have if you are in context of an uh, osteochondromatosis. Uh, and that's it. Is right? this the one that determines the proper measurement of the cap? Correct. So you do an MRI and you measure the cap and should be less than two centimeters. Two centimeters. Very good. Osteochondroma. So in summary, these contradictions are very similar, similar terms, uh, but. Uh, osteochondroma is the exoptosis, it grows outside. Uh, the, the, the pathologist cannot differentiate this from this. If you don't tell them that this lesion is growing outside the bone, they will call it enchondroma. Okay? That is in the metaphysis, okay, with chondroid calcification, chondroid matrix, and then you have the chondroblastoma that is in the epiphysis or above. All right, any question about this? No? Thank you, sir. No problem.